Welcome to Natural Habitat Adventures Daily Dose of Nature. Today's topic, when your phone is your only camera. Presented by NatHab Expedition Leader, Aditya Panda. I'm your host, Rob Mess. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. Over to you, Aditya. Thank you, Rob. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having uh, a wonderful start to the week. Um, uh, today's topic is one uh, that I hadn't presented on before. I've been doing a lot of photography webinars, and uh, most of them have, have been about, you know, um, proper cameras, serious cameras for uh, serious photographers. And uh, I thought uh, it's high time I did one on smartphone photography. Now, before we get into our subject, for those of you who haven't uh, uh, watched any of my webinars in the past or haven't had a chance to travel with me. My name is Aditya Panda and I have been leading NatHab expeditions in India since 2016. I primarily lead the what we call the tiger trips in India, the Grand India Wildlife Adventure, India Tiger Quest and India Tiger Safari, which is a photo pro expedition. Um, when I'm not leading uh, NatHab expeditions, I'm based in the eastern part of India, eastern central part of India, uh, in a city called Bhubaneswar, and um, I keep myself busy with conservation work that I do here in tiger and elephant landscapes. Now, let's get into our topic. The vast majority of guests who travel with me um, you know, 90% or more maybe, usually travel with just their smartphone as their main camera. And uh, even, um, you know, with wildlife trips, that's their only camera. And uh, I often see them struggling to get um, good wildlife pictures and to get anything more than simple, you know, snapshots uh, of their trip. And um, I've always done my best to try and help my guests with uh, getting the most out of their smartphone. Um, those of you who might have watched any of my uh, photography webinars in the past might have heard me say again and again, and this is not my original quote, it's, uh, it's a very widely quoted quote. And that is that the best camera uh, uh, for, for your trip is the one that you have with you. So uh, with, with that ethos in mind, I've always tried to help my guests get the best out of their smartphone cameras on safari trips. And um, you know, while um, the general notion, and it's not an incorrect notion, um, the general notion is that you need long lenses and uh, you know, uh, super telephoto zooms uh, and really powerful fast action cameras to get great wildlife pictures, it doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot get keepers with your smartphone camera. Now, uh, before I continue, I would like to give a disclaimer, which is that I myself am no smartphone photography expert. I use a fairly uh, basic smartphone and uh, I use it primarily as a phone. Being a photographer, I shoot mostly with my cameras and my phone does the job of a phone, which is to make calls and send texts. So um, while a lot of the pictures used in this webinar, uh, pictures and videos are um, uh, from my smartphone, um, I don't really have a huge collection of wildlife pictures from my phone. So uh, please make do with what I've uh, managed to put on the slides today. And uh, there are two pictures in this um, uh, webinar that are not from my smartphone. And if you, can, uh, if you can find out which two those are, just put them in the questions field. Um, now, Smartphone wildlife photography is, um, it, it's got its own advantages. 
Um, smartphones are fairly easy to use. They're very, very handy. Certainly a lot more handy than large cameras with bulky lenses that make airports a nightmare. Um, smartphones are great uh, for sharing pictures. You can immediately send your picture to your friends and family. You can put them up on social media. Uh, you can email them. All of these things which are not really possible so easily with uh, a DSLR or a dedicated camera because you know uh, you have to first process the pictures then download them then uh, email them and um, it, it simply isn't as easy as taking a picture with your smartphone and immediately being able to share it with the world um, as far as quality is concerned um, you know if your primary use of your photographs is to view them on a screen on your ipad or your phone or your computer uh, if if the primary use of your photography is to share pictures with friends and family uh, and put them up on social media you don't really need anything more than a smartphone and uh, of course, smartphones do have some limitations, many limitations when it um, comes to comparing them with dedicated cameras. They're still very, very usable. And uh, on this webinar, that's what we'll be talking about. Um, we'll talk about how to get the best out of your smartphone when it comes to wildlife photography. And that starts with choosing the best possible phone. Now you have, you know, plenty of smartphones out there in the market for every budget, and uh, almost every one of them has a camera, if not more than one camera. Um, so when you're choosing a smartphone for your trip, uh, or or if while choosing a smartphone, um, if photography is one of your key um, criteria for consideration then uh, these are some of the uh, things that you can keep in mind while deciding upon a smartphone. Um, of course, look up the reviews. The uh, internet is filled with reviews. Uh, do uh, read up the uh, camera performance reviews from these smartphones. Um, having a lot of megapixels does help. Um, earlier, a lot of phones, could only manage what is known as digital zoom, while um, you know, which is not the same thing as um, optical zoom. Optical zoom is where you zoom in with um, an actual lens, and I'm going to talk about this later and discuss this in detail uh, in the course of uh, today's webinar. But try and get a smartphone that has the option of optical zoom. That really helps. Uh, smartphones these days, like cameras, are also starting to have the option of being able to shoot pictures in the RAW format. The RAW format lets you um, get much higher quality pictures and provides tremendous uh, room for post-processing. Again, something that we'll discuss later. Uh, video is a very important part of shooting with smartphones these days. and uh, Many smartphones are capable of shooting in uh, 4K or even 8K video, which is the highest uh, quality of uh, video. 4K is, uh, you know, uh, actually four times the uh, resolution of HD, which is usually what you see uh, on the TV screen or at movie theaters. Um, having a phone that is capable of taking uh, good quality pictures in low light, which has a good uh, night mode, a usable night mode is very useful, especially because when you're on a wildlife trip, um, you might be out early in the morning and late in the evening. And those are the times when wild animals are most uh, active in most cases. Um, so good low light capabilities are always a big plus. Also, try and get phones that have multiple dedicated lenses. You know, they have, there are phones with four, six um, 
five lenses these days. And uh, these lenses, there, there are dedicated lenses that do telephoto work. There are dedicated wide angle lenses. There are dedicated macro lenses in them. So uh, as you switch between these modes, the phone uh, chooses the right lens for the right purpose. So having multiple lenses um, on a phone is always a big plus versus having uh, a single lens that has to do everything. Once you get your phone, you can um, also get uh, a lot of accessories that are available these days. Amazon and eBay are flooded with them. Uh, you have, you know, uh, a lot of uh, accessory options to improve uh, the photographic capabilities of your phone. And these include dedicated lens attachments. Uh, you actually get telephoto lens attachments for your particular phone model that you can fix to your phone. And uh, your phone then actually has a zoom lens, a telephoto lens of its own. And of course, uh, all these lens attachments come uh, in varying qualities. So look up the internet, look up eBay and Amazon and uh, find one that is of high quality and has some good reviews. And uh, you, you know, it's, it's a big plus to have a, a dedicated telephoto lens attachment. These are very compact. You know, they're meant to be used on phones, so they're not huge, um, but they're very, very useful. Um, if you want to shoot landscapes or uh, with a video or maybe something like a time lapse or a hyperlapse, then um, getting a phone tripod is also not a bad idea at all. Again, like with all phone accessories, these are compact and easy to pack, and uh, they really help get uh, you know very very high quality pictures and videos straight out of your phone um, the ubiquitous uh, selfie stick uh, is also a very good uh, accessory to have especially when trying to shoot say if you're shooting from inside a jeep uh, a, a safari jeep then you can use your selfie stick to hold your phone down really low and get some really nice um, low angle perspectives of whatever it is that you are shooting. Also, um, you get attachments um, on, uh, you know, that you can fix on your phone's camera, uh, which will allow you to mount your phone on a, a pair of binoculars or on a spotting scope. And that is also something that I'm going to talk about later today. Once you have the hardware, it's time to get some good software as well. You know, the camera uh, on its own in the phone with the phone's own native camera app might not be um, as, you know, it, it, it might not be harnessing the camera's maximum potential from your phone. There are some really good um, uh, camera apps that uh, you can download onto your phone to greatly improve the capabilities of your phone's inbuilt camera. And uh, these include much better autofocusing, uh, tracking a moving subject, which is very important with wildlife because wild animals tend to keep moving and it might become difficult to keep track of them uh, and keep them in focus. Um, also with uh, wildlife photography, uh, we always like to, um, to, to have sharp focus on our subject. And uh, it's, it, it always gives a nice feel if you can isolate your subject from the background by blurring the background out while having focus on the subject. So these apps uh, actually allow you to do that. And uh, they also give you much more uh, manual control over the camera settings. And uh, all of that results in very high quality photos. Um, for phones that have uh, the capability of shooting raw photos, there are also uh, dedicated apps for them that, um, uh, that, that help you get uh, even higher quality raw photos and give you a tremendous amount of control on every parameter to uh, 
um, to, to be able to uh, sort of uh, fine tune everything and get the maximum possible quality out of your pictures. Um, I've mentioned a couple of apps for uh, uh, one for uh, Android phone users and one for iPhone users. Uh, you could look these up online and uh, you, can, you can download them onto your phone and start giving them a try. Now, having your hardware and your software ready, it's time to set your camera up for wildlife. Now, when you use your phone's camera for taking pictures of people and you know street photography and things like that, you know regular everyday photography like all of us do, our pets, our cars, our um, sunrises and sunsets and selfies, of course, uh, the the settings in which the camera might uh, be factory set uh, might not be ideal for wildlife photography. So um, you can change a few settings to uh, make your phone more capable for shooting wildlife. And uh, I have listed some of them here. Uh, choose the highest possible resolution on your phone's camera. You can go into the settings and it will show you, you know, uh, starting from your phone's highest uh, megapixel uh, to lower sizes because some people like to shoot lower resolutions in order to save space uh, but if you're trying to get quality pictures of wildlife pictures that you're likely to crop later because you might want to get closer to your uh, subject then you want all the megapixels that you can get so choose the highest possible resolution in your camera setting uh, many phones also have something called the hdr mode uh, the HDR mode is nothing but um, a high dynamic range mode. Now, when you take a picture, a regular picture, um, it exposes either for the brighter parts of the frame or the darker parts of the frame. And uh, when it does that, what it does is if it is exposing for the brighter part of the frame, then the darker areas become too dark. And if it is exposing for the darker part of the frame, then the brighter areas end up becoming too bright. Uh, what high dynamic range or HDR does is that it combines multiple pictures, um, uh, some of them exposing for the bright areas and the others exposing for the dark areas and give you a combined picture which has both the bright areas and the dark areas exposed correctly and giving you something um, you know with a lot more color and contrast and saturation and much closer to what your to what your eye is seeing in that frame next uh, we'll talk about the burst mode um, the shutter options in your camera in your phone camera will have multiple modes. There might be single shot uh, options. There might be timer options where you can set a timer for the camera to click in say anything from two seconds to 10 seconds later or 20 seconds later. And then there is also a burst mode. A burst mode will shoot multiple frames per second. And these could be 10 or 20 or 30 or sometimes 50 frames per second or more. And uh, turning that on will let you take some really fast action pictures of moving animals. And it is always worthwhile turning the burst mode on uh, at its highest possible capability uh, when photographing wildlife. Because animals move, animals uh, you know, eat, they move their heads around, they fly. Um, and, uh, you know, our objective is to freeze action. So uh, when we shoot in burst mode, our chances of getting the animal doing something interesting increase. And also if it is an animal on the move, say it's, a, it's an antelope running or sprinting across the plains, then uh, if you 
shoot 30 or 40 frames per second, your chances of getting that antelope in a great uh, position uh, are much higher. So use the burst mode. Uh, one very important thing to remember is to turn off the flash. The um, inbuilt flash in cameras, in phone cameras, are of no use with wildlife. Um, in fact, they do mess up the exposure and are completely unnecessary. And uh, you know they're unnecessary at best, and at worst they can actually disturb the wildlife. So it's best to remember to turn off the flash. Now I was talking about multiple lenses on cameras, on phone cameras, and uh, when you open your phone's camera app, um, close to the shutter button, you'll find usually most phones these days three or four options for uh, shooting, you know, for shooting at different focal lengths. There's usually 1x, 2x, and 0.5x. 1x is the uh, standard uh, focal length uh, of, of your phone's camera. 2x is uh, two times zoom. 0.5x is usually, um, uh, it's, it's a wide, frame it, it makes the frame wider and covers a lot more um, uh, a, a lot a lot larger area and is useful in landscapes and things like that so depending on what you're shooting uh, be it a landscape or uh, an animal <coughs> really close or an animal far away uh, choose the right focal length and uh, cameras also have different scene modes you have uh, uh, you know, phone cameras have modes now for food, for landscape, for uh, night uh, photography. They have similarly uh, something akin to a sports or action mode. Choose the sports or action mode for wildlife because that's primarily what you're going to be doing. Now, on to um, shooting tips and tricks light is everything in photography uh, no matter how good your camera is no matter how high your megapixels are no matter how expensive your phone or camera or lens is this rule applies across the board from smartphones to cinema cameras all of them uh, provide best results when the light is right now shooting it at midday with the sun high uh, is never going to give you good results uh, there'll be harsh light there'll be uh, shadows uh, on the uh, animal's face and uh, it's it's never going to be able to give you the, the kind of light that shooting early in the morning or late in the afternoon can give um, these uh, times you know these uh, this period from uh, sunset uh, say sorry sunrise and for the next hour or two and uh, the couple of hours before sunset are uh, when you get this beautiful golden light uh, soft light uh, that brings out the colors that doesn't have any harshness that doesn't uh, give uh, blown highlights or very harsh shadows and uh, it's it's best to utilize those times of the day to get your pictures. So uh, shoot at dawn and dusk and uh, try shooting in the best light and use that to your advantage. Another common problem that I see um, with a lot of uh, uh, people who photograph uh, with their phones is that we tend to ignore that uh, you know we, we just tend to point our phones and click, <clears throat> and click the shutter button because uh, phone cameras um, do have autofocus uh, they do tend in most cases not all cases in most cases they do tend to be fairly accurate in choosing the most prominent subject in the frame uh, 
but that's because we are usually photographing uh, people or objects which have, uh, you know, which are fairly prominent in the frame and uh, 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 and are quite distinct from the background. But with wildlife, uh, you might have a lot of distracting elements in that frame. Uh, there might be trees, there might be rocks, so many things uh, that can distract the phone's camera from the actual animal. So it's very important to focus on the animal, uh, ideally on the subject's uh, face and eyes. And uh, the way to do that is to simply tap on the animal and your phone is going to focus there. And if your phone has a focus tracking mode, uh, where you know after you select focus it tracks the animal if it moves to turn that feature on and also keep an eye on it because it's it's a device it can lose track of the subject and start picking something else up so do that and keep your focus in mind always now if there is one piece of advice that i could give uh, to most photographers uh, photographing wildlife and especially people who photograph uh, who photograph wildlife with their phones it is that keep your phone steady hold it steady and keep it steady uh, that is the most common mistake that people do you know we photograph with our phones and people are usually not keeping a, uh, an eye on what they're doing they're moving with the animal and when they click they sometimes take their phone so hard that the phone moves and that will give you blurry pictures. Shake is the enemy of sharpness. When you are shooting with your phone or with any camera for that matter, hold it really steady and press the um, shutter button really gently. And uh, if at all it is possible, um, say if you're in a vehicle or if you're walking uh, try and use whatever support you can get to make your phone even steadier rest your elbows somewhere while you're uh, holding your phone pointed at the subject or if you're standing next to a tree lean on it get all the support uh, that you can um, and all of this becomes even more critical when you're shooting video because there is nothing that makes a video, uh, you know, uh, uh, what could be a great video, um, a pain to watch if, uh, you know, the phone is moving and the screen is, the, the frame is moving. It, it's, uh, it, it can actually make people car sick looking at a video like that for too long, a shaky video. Uh, you don't want a shaky video. You want a steady, stable video. Um, also remember, when you zoom in, um, the effect of shake is also magnified. So when you zoom in, it's even more important to try and get some more support. Um, use a bean bag if you can. Um, you know, most safari jeeps have them in them. Um, use the bars on the jeep, the roll bars. Um, anything that you can find, use that to. Um, Stabilize your hands and stabilize your phone. Next important thing to keep in mind is to get uh, a great composition. You know, the same subject in the same background can look very, very ordinary if the composition is, you know, if there's no thought that's gone into the composition. And exactly the same subject in the same light with the same background can look stunning if. The composition is right if there is thought that has gone into the composition and if uh, you know uh, elements of the environment have been used to tell a story uh, there's a very simple rule called the rule of the thirds um, in fact when you put your phone camera on you can uh, choose a, a setting that will actually draw uh, it will it, it'll draw four lines uh, across your phone screen, two uh, horizontal and two vertical. These lines divide your phone screen into uh, three equal uh, 
uh, <coughs> into, into equal thirds, both horizontally and vertically. And um, you can use these lines to place either the sky or the horizon and to place your subject in such a way that it is placed at the intersection of uh, uh, one of these, of, of uh, two of these rule of thirds lines. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, also use things like roads, um, streams, uh, tree trunks, things like that as leading lines to draw attention to your subject. And while focusing on the subject, do not ignore the background and the foreground. The background and the foreground can do a lot to enhance uh, the presence of your subject in the screen. And also keep in mind that uh, every picture should ideally tell a story. And uh, this story depends upon uh, how you use the natural elements in that frame to complement the presence of the subject in that frame. This bird here is called the Rufus tree pie. And uh, on one of the India Tiger Quest uh, expeditions to Ranthambo Tiger Reserve in uh, Northwestern India, um, it became very, very cooperative. It wanted a picture taken and uh, it perched on our Jeep and uh, I could get really close to it. And uh, I turned on the portrait mode of my phone and got this nice picture of it. Uh, as you can see, the bird is sharply in focus, but the background has been blurred. That includes the legs of one of our guests who was right behind the bird. Um, you know, uh, not all animals are as cooperative as this Rufus tree pie was. Um, one of the biggest disadvantages of shooting wildlife with your phone uh, is that wild animals tend to be far away. And when they're far away, you uh, struggle to, uh, you know, get them clear enough and close enough on your um, uh, on your frame. So try and get as close as you possibly can to your subject. Um, and uh, when you can't, uh, when you, you can't physically go any closer without endangering your own self or endangering your subject, um, try and use things like optical zoom or the lens attachments and scope attachments that I talked about earlier. Um, getting close is really the uh, aim of all wildlife photographers, regardless of whether you're photographing with a smartphone or whether you have a huge 800 millimeter bazooka for a lens. Shutter speed is another control that uh, uh, you can try and uh, uh, set in your phone settings. Um, most phone cameras these days have a manual mode as well. Uh, you can turn that on and uh, have some more control over the exposure parameters of your phone's camera. That includes shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. Now, um, as I've been uh, explaining, with wild animals, our goal most of the time is to freeze action because animals are moving. Uh, we want a sharp, steady, clear picture of them, and uh, freezing action is our goal. So uh, there are two ways you can do that on a phone. One is to choose the sport or action mode, and the phone will try to do that for you. And the other is to get into the manual mode and uh, try and shoot, uh, try and choose a high shutter speed, say something like one five hundredth of a second or one one thousandth of a second. And uh, that is really going to help you um, uh, freeze action in animals and birds that are moving fast. Um, also, uh, regardless of whether or not you're using the burst mode, 
try and take multiple pictures. Um, you know, it's it's fairly easy nowadays uh, with the phones. Uh, point your phone at the subject frame the scene. Um, hopefully, you had your settings right to start with, and then take multiple pictures with your phone, even if you're shooting in burst mode. Uh, have multiple exposures. That way, again, uh, your chances of capturing a rare expression or a rare uh, action uh, increase, as well as your chances of freezing the frame uh, uh, significantly increase. Now, this is something I was wanting to talk about. Um, phones, uh, most phones have only what we know as digital zoom. Now, what digital zoom does is that it is it, it simply crops the picture. Um, your phone might have, say, 20 megapixels. That might be the native resolution of your phone's sensor. If you take a picture at, say, 1x uh, zoom, which is you know the standard uh, focal length of your phone's camera, and then uh, later crop it by 50%, that is technically what two times zoom is on that phone if it is only capable of digital zoom. Now, what happens with digital zoom is, uh, regardless uh, of how many uh, times the zoom is, so 2x or 4x or 8x or 10x, the phone is only cropping the picture uh, by that much, right? So the more the zoom is, your picture's quality is going to be. If your phone has 20 megapixels as its sensor capability, and you do a 2x zoom, 2x digital zoom on it, that will give you a 10 megapixel picture. If you do a 10x uh, or 10 times digital zoom on it, it will only give you a 2 megapixel picture. So what happens with digital zoom is that as you zoom in, the pictures start to get grainy and blurry and the quality starts to go down. So it's best not to use the zoom feature if digital zoom is the only feature you have. Uh, you might as well crop it when you are editing your picture later. But uh, when you use optical zoom, and optical zoom can be used in many ways. Uh, Many phones these days, the high-end phones, all have optical zoom capability. Um, you know, they actually have a lens uh, that uh, is like a camera lens, where as you zoom, the focal length of the lens changes and the resolution of the picture remains intact. So when you're zooming, you are actually optically zooming by using uh, physical glass rather than cropping into the picture and worsening its quality. So using optical zoom is much better than using digital zoom because it's going to preserve the quality of your picture. Now, if your phone does not have optical zoom capability in it, then the only way to use optical zoom is to get a lens attachment for it, uh, like the ones I was mentioning earlier, or to mount it on a spot scope um, uh, or a, a pair of binoculars. You know, mounting your phone on a spot scope can give you uh, 30 times or 50 times zoom without losing on quality. Another feature that a lot of high-end phones these days have is the capability to shoot raw images. So, so if that uh, possibility exists in your phone, uh, go into the settings and turn that on because then you will get a really high quality file uh, that is not going to be compressed like the regular uh, JPEG files and that uh, can be uh, post-processed later to get tremendous quality out of it. Which uh, brings me to the subject of post-processing. Now, it is not something to be intimidated by. Uh, learning to edit pictures is not all that difficult. Is the, the, the apps that are available these days um, 
and uh, your phone's own apps that are inbuilt in it make editing really, really intuitive and fairly easy. And uh, many people have ethical concerns about editing. They seem to assume that editing automatically means manipulation. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that. Editing is not photoshopping. Um, you know, you manipulate a picture when you completely change, uh, you know, the, the, the color and the lighting and sometimes even the subjects uh, to what did not naturally exist when the picture was actually being taken. But to have taken a picture and then to tweak it, to get the best out of it, to fine tune it is not uh, manipulation. Uh, you see, no camera, even the most expensive camera, cannot see what the human eye sees. And our objective, after we take a picture, while we are editing it, is to try and get something closest to what our eyes actually saw while we were there. So don't be uh, put off by editing. Uh, try and learn it. It's not all that difficult. Uh, Part of editing is also cropping. You can crop to fine tune uh, the composition of the picture. And uh, you can go through a lot of parameters. I've uh, shown some of them on uh, an app that I use on my phone to edit pictures that I've shot with my phone. And these are very, very um, simple parameters that you can learn um, and play around with and you can easily edit pictures. These are some apps that I would for editing on your phone. Uh, my personal favorite when it comes to editing pictures taken on the phone uh, is Snapseed. It's uh, a free app that you can download on any phone. It's very, very good. Um, Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom, which is what I use to edit my uh, you know, picture shot with my camera on my uh, computer at home. Uh, my heavy raw files from uh, my camera uh, is is um, a really really capable app, and uh, that is my uh, workhorse app when it comes to editing my uh, DSLR pictures. But there is also a phone version of the app available, and you can download that and use it. Uh, especially if your phone is capable of shooting raw pictures, I would strongly recommend Lightroom to edit those pictures on your phone. Uh, there are many other apps like Google Photos and uh, even your um, the native app on whatever phone that it is you, uh, you're using uh, will have editing um, uh, editing options and these are all very easy to learn and uh, practice. Uh, some very simple edit uh, editing parameters include exposure which uh, which controls the brightness of the scene then there is contrast uh, which controls how much detail you want in the bright parts and the dark parts uh, to, to pop out uh, in order to add some punch to the picture uh, then there are highlights and shadows that you can individually control um, and then very simple uh, parameters like saturation to control the uh, depth of color um, and sharpness. So it's it's very easy, you know, uh, even if you don't want to do it on your phone, uh, you can just download your pictures onto your computer and say if you're using a, a Mac uh, computer, which is what I use, uh, an Apple computer, then uh, even um, the preview app which is what is used to go through uh, photos um, on, on uh, any MacBook computer. Even the preview app has uh, the possibility, the capability to edit pictures. And this screenshot that I put on this app, uh, on this slide is actually from the Apple preview app. It's very simple, very straightforward, very easy. And um, you know, uh, one thing I've always, um, well, let me tell you about this uh, first, about uh, 
um, far away subject and then we'll talk about video if a subject is far away you know there a few slides ago i told you that you must try and get as close as you can to your subject but what if you can't what if you know no, you, you simply can't get close enough to your subject to get a frame filling picture then uh, i would recommend that you try and shoot your subject in its landscape um, you know animals in a landscape present really pleasing pictures so don't always fixate yourself on zooming in as much as possible just onto the animal try and step back a little and show the animal in its landscape the whole frame is the story the subject alone is not the story another thing that you can do uh, when your subject is far away is just switch to video you know uh, video works really well when animals are not close enough and uh, with video in fact you can zoom in further without losing much quality uh, it's much easier to zoom in on video than it is while shooting stills so um, <coughs> Here is a simple video of a herd of elephants that I shot with my phone. Uh, you know, did not zoom in at all. And uh, zooming in would not have shown this brilliant blue sky and the woodland that is behind the grassland in which the elephants are grazing. So shoot video uh, when, when the subject is uh, too far. Also, there are many fun features in phones, uh, in phone cameras that you can use to get um, really interesting pictures. I shot this picture of um, a baiga couple. You know, uh, baigas are one of the oldest tribes inhabiting uh, the forests of central India. Uh, we had visited them on one of our trips. We had vis visited their home, and uh, I really liked uh the setting of the scene they were sitting in the courtyard of their house drying mahua uh flower uh, uh, and uh, you know it was late afternoon the light was beautiful the blue of the house uh looked really nice and i switched my phone to the portrait mode and took a picture of the two of them the phone focused on their faces while blurring out the background and that uh, worked really well. Um, so just like the portrait mode, there is uh, a macro mode in most phones. There are night modes. Um, there, there is also something known as live photos, which are really fun. You know, when you swipe through your uh, gallery uh, through the pictures, the first second or two, the uh, picture actually has a bit of video in it, and then it becomes a still photo. Um, there are also modes like time lapse and hyperlapse, which you can use to get really interesting natural history documentation. Um, phone scoping is something that I've been talking about all through today. Um, attaching your phone to a spotting scope or a binocular. Uh, that's a great way to shoot far away wild animals. Um, these attachments work very well. Uh, you can look them up on the internet fix it to your phone and attach it to a spotting scope. And then spotting scopes are excellent pieces of optic most uh, of the times, and they have tremendous powers of zooming. Um, most of them are at least a 30 times zoom or a 50 times zoom. And uh, it's um, really, really uh, possible to get some very close pictures of faraway animals just with your phone by mounting it on a spotting scope. Um, just keep in mind that while you do it, uh, fix your spotting scope on a good set of tripods and uh, use the timed shutter because when you're photographing at such high magnifications, even the act of you uh, touching your phone's uh, shutter button can produce enough shape to give you a blurry picture. So use a two second timer uh, so that you know the phone has time to steady before the picture is actually taken um, also while you are um, shooting uh, pictures with your phone uh, try and add perspective be it wildlife or be it 
you know, inanimate subjects, try and add some perspective. Now, I could have shot this, um, uh, these, these lichens on the rocks, uh, uh, you know, holding my phone down like that and showing just the rock and the lichens. But then that wouldn't have told a story. So what I did was I went low. I put the rock with the lichens in the foreground and I put the mountains in the background and that tells you a story. That tells you that this rock with the lichens on it is in the Himalaya, in the Trans Himalaya region where we go on our snow leopard trips. And, you know, finally, use the selfie camera, get in the frame. Uh, you know, there's a tiger in this frame. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but uh, you can see it when you look at the, uh, look at the picture on the on the phone. I had given my phone to my uh, guide, uh, and I was photographing the tiger uh, with my camera, and he took a picture of me with the tiger. So use that selfie camera, get in the frame with your uh, with your wild animal subjects. It's something you cannot do with any mirrorless or DSLR camera. Try different camera angles. Um, to enhance the composition of your pictures and um, you know put your phone low turn it around um, you know so that the camera is on the lower side try, you know, try all kinds of experiments with framing and composition that's something that becomes so much simpler and so much easier with a phone and most importantly practice as much as you can and um, you know practice makes perfect so practice with your pets practice with your garden wildlife practice with birds you know try all of that out and with that i'll uh, ask rob to take us to the question and answer session i can't wait to hear all the questions you have uh, for me all right everyone before we get into the question and answer session, I would like to remind everyone that you can submit your questions via the question field in your control panel. So with that, let's get to some of these questions. So one of our uh, one of our guests was taking a shot uh, of two flowers. One was closer up and one was slightly further behind it. Uh, the flower in front was, um, and focused, but the one slightly behind it was blurred. Is there any way to change that so both flowers could be in focus? Well, um, you know, when um, your phone or your camera is close to the subject, um, there's something called depth of field that becomes uh, very, very uh, prominent. You see, uh, uh, your camera can focus on one plane. And uh, whatever is in that plane will remain in focus while everything else will, uh, will, will blur out. What uh, happens is that, especially um, in, in lower light, your phone or your camera will try to shoot at a wider aperture. You know, the aperture through which light enters the lens will widen up. And uh, that will further reduce your depth of field, uh, causing more blurring for the background. So what you could do in situations like that, you try and uh, get a deeper uh, depth of field is uh, number one, you could use um, an artificial source of light, like your camera's flash. And uh, that will uh, uh, very likely give you a narrower, depth of field, uh, sorry, a deeper depth of field. And another thing that you could do is to get into the manual mode of your phone and uh, use a narrow aperture. Otherwise, uh, what you could do also is to use the landscape mode. That is going to give you a very deep depth of field. All right, thank you so much. So <clears throat> what do you recommend to reduce shake if you're say on a, boat bobbing up in the sea well there isn't much you can do then but what you can do is you can practice holding your phone uh like this and use your arms like a sort of gimbal um speaking of which you do actually get gimbal attachments uh you know sort of um, 
monopods that you can hold and mount your phone and these have a little gyroscope inside them and that counters any shape that uh, happens especially in situations like that when when you're in a boat so uh, a gimbal uh, uh, monopod i think would be the best uh, solution to that great thank you for that advice so can you tell us what uh, raw means raw is a format uh, you know it's a file format there are many different file formats in which an image file can be seen um, most commonly the file format that we see is jpeg uh, which is a compressed file format uh, which gives you a file size that is fairly low and uh, in order to do that uh, you know a lower file size is easier to email it's easier to uh, share it's um, easier to send on whatsapp and uh, what you lose in return for having that lower file size is a lot of the information that was captured while the picture was being taken um, the the phone or the computer or the camera will uh, discard a lot of that information keep the very minimum and uh, give you an image file what the raw format does is that it does not do that it does not discard any of that information it keeps all of it where you know it's it's like um uh, comparing a slide negative to a printed postcard size picture the printed postcard size picture is your jpeg file while the slide negative from which you can print a postcard size picture or a massive poster is like the raw file the raw file has a much higher file size because it has so much data in it but a raw file is one that you can work on in the digital dark room uh, which is your photo editing app and from that then you can export the result as a jpeg so is the raw format um, standard on most phones or is that something i have to down uh, no. get an app for uh, it's, it's uh, something that is standard um, on uh, professional cameras but on phones it has only started uh, beginning to show up uh, high-end phones these days uh, with good cameras most of the iphones uh, they all uh, now come with the ability to shoot raw it it is not a feature that used to be there in older phones Great, thank you for uh, covering that. So um, sometimes we'll see uh, videos shot uh, and then posted on the internet where you see the sides blurred out. Uh, is that a deliberate effect that happens while you're shooting or is that something that happens in post-production? Well, um, um, if you're talking about uh, videos in wildlife documentaries and things like that, then that mostly happens because most of these videos of wild animals are shot on uh, you know using long telephoto lenses and uh, i was explaining about depth of field a while ago uh, when you shoot at a long focal length when you zoom in a lot you end up sacrificing a lot of uh, depth of field so what that does is that it um, uh, blurs out the background and the foreground and you only have focus on one plane and uh, that plane is usually the subject which is the animal so um, it is both um, optical as well as deliberate it's deliberate because when we are showing wild animals in pictures or videos we want the viewers attention to go on to the animal and to uh, make the animal stand out from the uh, from the surroundings so uh, it's it's both deliberate as well as uh, optical. So if I decide that I wanted to shoot a video and then take just a frame of it and make it a, a still photo, is that something that can be effective? Well, you could do that, but it's not going to give you the quality that you will get uh, if you shot a still photo. Um, it's going to be of a much reduced resolution so you cannot crop or zoom much with it 
also it is very likely to be blurry. So if you, um, if you, if you shoot at the highest video resolution of a phone, uh, say something like at least 4K, if not more, um, then you could probably get a usable still sort of screen grab of it, but um, it's, it's still not going to be as good as a proper still photo. So can you tell us a little bit more about the ProCam app? And some people are a little confused as to which app you're referring to. So could you clarify that a little for us? Yeah, I'll go back to the slide. Um, <clears throat> So, um, um, yeah, this one. So, if your phone is an iPhone, if you use an Apple phone, um, the ProCam app is one of the best for iPhones. And if you are using something like a Samsung or, you know, something else which is not an Apple then it is most likely to be uh, likely to be an uh, Android phone. And for Android phones, you can use the camera FB5 app. Now, what this app does is that uh, through this app, you can use your phone's camera. Instead of using your uh, regular uh, camera icon on the phone to get into the camera, you can get into your camera through one of these apps and then it gives you a lot more control and a lot more features and a lot more capabilities than your phone's, uh, you know, standard, um, you know, factory fitted uh, camera application. Great. Thank you so much for clarifying that for us. So some of us have a problem when taking a picture, the sun is shining down on our screen and we can hardly see it. Do you have any tips or tricks to help us see our screen a little bit better? Yeah, you have to um, increase the brightness of your phone to the maximum. Um, and uh, one of the easiest ways to uh, see your screen when the sun is shining onto it is to simply shade it with your palm like that. And, uh, you know, the newer phones uh, have much better visibility in bright sunlight. The screens are much more visible in bright sunlight. But the two simplest things that you can do are to uh, increase, to maximize your brightness and to use your hand or something else to shade your screen. And uh, that, that works really well. So when taking a lot of photographs with my, uh, with my cell phone, it can eat up some uh, storage capacity. Do you have any tricks for us on how we can make room? Yeah. Um, Especially when you're shooting at high resolutions, um, your <clears throat> storage capacity is going to get uh, filled up really quickly. And uh, the only solution to that is to get phones with a lot of storage and uh, also to use something like iCloud or uh, you know, Google Drive, you know, uh, some sort of cloud storage app where you can continuously upload your pictures to. Uh, and then delete them from, uh, you know, their physical place on the phone. And uh, every time you are connected to the Wi-Fi or connected to the internet, your phone will start to upload your pictures to the cloud. And that way uh, you have two advantages. One is that you uh, don't end up eating storage space on your phone. And uh, also, uh, even if you lose your phone, your pictures are up there in the cloud, in the internet, and when you get another phone, you can access those. So that's that's uh, the best uh, solution I've found to that problem. It is a problem, um, and uh, you know I also struggle with it all the time. I have to continuously keep uploading these uh, pictures onto the cloud and keep deleting them from my phone. Great. Well, thank you for tackling that. Unfortunately, that's going to be the last question that we do have time for today. So I'd like to throw it back to you for your closing comments. Thank you, Rob. And uh, thank you, everyone. I hope uh, you found this webinar useful. Um, you know, shooting with a smartphone is a challenge that 
a lot of our guests face uh, on our trips. And I really hope that uh, this, this webinar will help you answer a lot of questions and uh, to enjoy your trips better and take back some great pictures and great memories. So thank you. Look forward to seeing you again soon on another episode of Daily Dose of Nature. Aditya, thank you so much for taking the time to present for us today. And I'd also like to thank everyone who tuned in today. Now, if you're interested in information on how you can travel with NADHAP, please give us a call at the number on your screen, or you can send us an email at info at nathab.com. Our adventure specialists are happy to help you out. Join us tomorrow for our next Daily Dose of Nature. You can check out this week's lineup, including registration links, on our website at nadhap.com slash webinars. We did record today's presentation, and we will have the replay available on our website soon. With that, I will conclude the webinar. Goodbye, everybody. We will see you next time.